the top three advanced friction hitches. We start with the most difficult one, then the next one is my personal favorite. And we will finish the series with an old time classic. On place 3 we start with the Mishokan friction hitch. Why place 3 you might wonder? Not because it's a bad hitch, but in my opinion the Mishokan is the most difficult one to tie out of the three. All friction hitches are built up with wraps around the climbing line and the Mishokan is no exception. So we start by wrapping our pressure cord four times around the climbing line. Continue by taking the marked top end of the pressure cord and bring it down. Cross over the bottom end of the pressure cord. Now we have arrived at the most difficult part of tying the Mishokan friction hitch. We will take it slow, so you can easily follow along. Start by making sure both ends of the pressure cord are on the right side of the climbing line. Next we continue with the bottom strand of the pressure cord goes over the top end, then back around the climbing line. Finally, it goes through the D-shaped loop on the left side of the hitch. And there you have it, the Mishokan friction hitch. Address the hitch and make sure that the attachment points of the pressure cord align. This is to prevent uneven loading. Now on to place two. This is my personal favorite, the distal hitch. I like the distal hitch because the hitch is easy to tie, grabs reliable, and it also releases smoothly. Like with all friction hitches, we start by making wraps around the climbing line with a brushed cord. For the basic distal hitch, we need three wraps, but depending on the climbing line and the conditions, I sometimes make four wraps to create a better grip. A keen eye might have noticed that the working end of the brusset cord is a bit longer at this point. This is because we need more length on this strand to finally end up with the same length on the tie-in. You can always adjust this later, but an even length on the tie-in points of the friction hitch is important to make sure the hitch is evenly loaded. Extreme offsets might result in unwanted situations. Next we take the working end, then we bring it over to the right bottom of the climbing line, continuing by passing underneath from right to left. This forms a loop. To finalize the distal hitch, we take the working end, then we stick that through this loop. Next you need to dress the hitch and make sure that the tie-in points are aligned. Now we finalize our top 3 of advanced friction hitches with the old time climber classic, the Blake's hitch. The Blake's hitch is a bit different. As you might have noticed, both the Mishokan and the Distal hitch use two attachment points. But the Blake's hitch only has one and is open ended. The big advantage of this is that you can use a tail end of your climbing line to form the hitch. To prevent the tail end of the Blake's hitch from slipping out of the knot, we tie a stopper knot in the end. You can do this before tying the Blake's hitch or when you are done. If you do it after, you must make sure that there is enough tail sticking out of the hitch to tie a stopper knot. If you do it forehand, like we do, then you don't need to worry about that. When tying the Blake's hitch, we also start with forming four coils around the climbing line. Next, we take the tail end with the stopper knot and feed it through the two bottom loops. When you already have the stopper knot in the tail end, this might be a bit harder. That is why some folks prefer to tie the stopper knot when the hitch is finished. Next, dress the Blake's hitch and make sure there is enough tail sticking out. And don't forget to tie the stopper in the tail if you haven't done that already.